Welcome back to the capnography tutorial. This is part six. In part four, we talked about uh, monitoring ventilation with capnography. In part five, we talked about monitoring circulation with capnography. Now I'm going to very, very briefly talk about monitoring metabolism in part six. Uh, so we're going to quickly go through this. It's not going to be a very long lesson. Uh, monitoring metabolism. So DKA. Patients with DKA or diabetic ketoacidosis, they hyperventilate to lessen their acidosis. They have deep, rapid ventilations. And what they're doing is they're trying to blow off CO2 because remember, CO2 causes uh, acid. So they're trying to compensate for metabolic acidosis with respiratory alkalosis. You can't truly do that, but your body tends to try to do that. So. Um, they're causing their PaCO2 level to go down. Um, and this is why we, we call CO2 acid. So water plus carbon dioxide equals carbonic acid, and carbonic acid is equal to hydrogen plus bicarbonate. If you like uh, chemical equations, here you go. If you add water plus CO2, it becomes carbonic acid, and that ends up becoming hydrogen plus bicarbonate. Hydrogen being an acid. Okay, so CO2 indirectly uh, ends up be having hydrogen ions become loosely associated with uh, this increase in CO2, increase in uh, acid, because hydrogen is acid. All right, um, that's kind of the, the breakdown of why these metabolic processes cause changes in your entitled CO2 readings. It's not super important to understand this to treat your patient, um, but if you do understand this, you'll know why metabolic acidosis causes an increase in respiratory rate uh, and why your pH levels will change based on the amount of CO2 in your body. Okay, so hyperthermia, hyperthermia. That's your fee febrile patients, right? Your febrile patients, and we've talked about this before, such as malignant hyperthermia hyperthermia, um, hyperpyrexia, um, you'll get a normal value here, and then with malignant hyperthermia, a super high value, super high value. Uh, and the reason is because of metabolism being an on overdrive. When you're febrile, uh, your metabolism is working more. So more cellular metabolism means you're consuming more oxygen and producing more CO2. And if you produce more CO2, you're going to get higher readings uh, from your capnography device. So the malignant hyperthermia patient, it's a rare side effect of RSI, so rapid sequence induction. When you're trying to intubate somebody, if you're using a depolarizing paralytic such as succinylcholine, you need to be very careful of malignant hyperthermia. Usually these patients will have a disorder that they know about. Um, they'll tell you they have a history of it if you can get it from the patients or their family. Um, generally, you don't want to intubate those patients using RSI. Sepsis, I spoke briefly about sepsis in the last uh, module. Sepsis, uh, entitled CO2 values are super important with septic patients. If you've got a value above 30, you have a much higher rate of survivability. Now I'm not saying that these patients are going to die on you in the back of the ambulance, but sepsis is being shown to be one of the big killers in our in population. I mean, the patients we run on, sepsis has a high incidence of mortality. And it's not even truly understood how many patients die because of sepsis, because it's attributed to so many other things like pneumonia or uh, just uremia. These are all sepsis. So we got to look at sepsis and get the entitled CO2 values. And just knowing this information here, if you have a value less than 30, your morbidity is super high, okay? Knowing that, these patients would require from you fluids. Give your septic patients fluids, as much fluids as you can give them without causing pulmonary edema. Obviously, you want to put them on oxygen, okay, and because they are in a shock, and give them pressors. If their blood pressure is low, give them pressors because it's going to really increase their survivability to get fluids, oxygen, and pressors from the pre-hospital clinician and then hopefully get that, that care and therapy continued in the hospital, get them on antibiotics. 
that's it for the metabolism portion. Uh, so that's it for part six. And then in part seven, we're going to go into some new stuff. And it's going to be a little bit longer. But this one was a quick, short one uh, for you to learn about the uses of capnography with people that have metabolic issues. All right, I will see you in part seven.